Welcome to The Great People Show, your guide to greatness, your GPS to excellence. Here's your host, J.J. White. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Great People Show. I am your host, J.J. White, and in The Great People studio with us here this morning is Mr. James Muncy. Good morning, brother. Good morning. Great morning. Great morning. It's always a great morning in the Great People Studio. What's happening? Oh, I'm feeling complacent. You're looking good today, man. Thank You're you. A, I've, have, I, have you ever wore a suit jacket in the Never studio? Never in the studio. I feel like I've been underdressing. Well, now you're overdressing me by a mile. And if you want to watch us in the studio specifically to see James's suit jacket, you can catch the show. We always do the show live on Facebook at facebook.com slash great people show. We want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in with us here this morning. You were born to achieve your truest self, to answer your calling and do it courageously. You've been selected for greatness. It's time to answer that call. That's why we're here today. And I heard a really cool little quote that I want to throw into this. All right. What happens when you climb to the top of the ladder and realize it's the wrong wall? You get off and you put it on the right one. That's a lot of time. Can be. You could take years to do that. We don't want to take that much time, folks. So we want to thank you for tuning in, whether you're listening to us on Apple Podcast or perhaps 97.7 FM, 820 AM, The Answer here in Richmond, Virginia. Why are some people so complacent? It's easy. Well, I think that's the answer to every question we ask on the show. Yeah. Of why someone or why are we X, Y, Z, and it always comes down to, well, because it's the easy way out. That's right. It's, it's, it's the easy road. And most people that I know usually take the easy road some of the time, mm -hmm. but not all the time. And that's what we're going to talk about on today's show. Because as I was driving into the studio this morning, and this kind of hit me, we, we try our best to avoid politics as much as we can. Uh, but it started to dawn on me that so much of the problems in our political system are based on complacency. It's, oh, no doubt. It's, it's, it's so easy to keep the status quo. Yes. It's comfortable, it's easy, it's safe, it's economical mm -hmm. for most people in their head, even though we know most of the greatest things in this world, especially ones that have produced income and revenue for people, weren't because you were just sitting around on the couch eating potato chips and it just fell out of the sky. That's right. And it's safe. Not only is it easy, but it's it's safe. That's our that's our safe zone to find what we like, find what we know, and just keep on keep on rolling. You know, why, why make a leap if you're perfectly comfortable mm -hmm. sitting right on the couch? Yeah. What do you, what do you feel is maybe an area in your life, James, that you tend to get a little too complacent with? Maybe something that you beat yourself up over and say, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm being too complacent about this. I think my, my professional career, I'm constantly, you know, it's like, no matter how far I think I'm pushing myself, I always think I, I could go further. I try really hard. I'm not a complacent person. I get no, bored not super easily. So that's oh. that's a tough question for me because boredom keeps me from being complacent. Yeah. Now, we saw that on we saw that on Facebook when we went to social media with the research question on Monday night on why some people are complacent and one of the comments there was it's because people are wired different. The the folks uh, that don't sleep a lot. They stay very active. Their mind consistently stays engaged with something. Mm -hmm. It's just really hard for them to sit still. Some people uh, wrap that up into ADD. Some people wrap that up into hyperactivity. Some mm -hmm. people wrap that up into passion, drive, and determination. It's sometimes at the end of the day, though, it's just literally because you don't feel comfortable sitting still for, for too long. Right. But there are a lot of people that it's just the opposite. They enjoy going to a job that is relatively easy for them, mm -hmm. going home and doing the same routine every night and sitting on the couch, like you said, watching TV or playing video games yep. and, and doing it all over again. And, and for a lot of people, that's their, that, that's, they, they would be scared to death to yep. constantly be, be leaping to new things. So a big question is, is something that we feel is complacent to us is absolutely not complacent to someone else, especially I see that in terms of being a parent. I don't like my son playing video games a lot. I think that's yep. an act of complacency We're because the same. he could be doing something else 
to further himself, such as read, which he's, he's starting to really like reading and things like that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's the easy way. It's fun. It's engaging. It kind of it kind of takes over our mind in a way, and we get trapped into it. Absolutely. And, you know, not only is it easy for the kid, but it's easy for the parents, right? I mean, oh, the, the TV is the best babysitter there is. It's so easy to plop your kids on the couch, <laughs> turn on the TV, and, and it's, it's cruise control. Yeah. Uh, now, we don't do that either. You know, we limit it to about 30 minutes a day. But that's the hard that's the mm-hmm. hard path. And, you know, thank God my wife works very hard not to allow to. that to happen. That's, well, that's a key. T- and while we're on the subject of, of parenting and letting your kids be complacent, uh, one, of the, one of the tools that we have found on this show to help, because most of the people that walk this sh- uh, watch, listen to the show and watch the show, maybe this is a new term, they walk the show, baby. That's right. They're walking the, <laughs> they're walking the principles of the show is uh, a Ginger Kids, which if you're a very busy parent and you're looking for tools and, and toys that teach rather than video games and, and iPads, we actually have a couple here in the studio. This is probably more of the grandparent toy because I think grandparents would buy this to their grandkids because they can give them to the kids and let them. Yes, let, and this then, is the one that I, I'm ticked off when they bring this to my house <laughs> yeah. because then I'm left with uh, the noisemakers. It's, it's important to engage your children because if you if you don't, <clears throat> complacency will set in. Yes. Complacency is the natural path. Um, and, and everything, and I want to talk about this part of it as well. Everything we see in this world, especially about personal development, corporate training, coaching from others, is get out of your comfort zone. The message is always the same. And I've used that message tremendously in my practice, being at Dale Carnegie for 17 years, that real growth only happens out of your comfort zone. But, but why? Because in the comfort zone, we're not trying to better ourselves. We're comfortable there. I mean, it's like a couch. I mean, if you're sitting, the, you know, it, it's a comfortable place to be. You don't want to get up. When you're in your comfort zone, you're not mm-hmm. motivated. It takes a lot of effort to do that, Jay. It takes effort to get out of your comfort zone. So I want to play the devil's advocate on this subject before we get too much further uh, does growth really need to happen outside of our comfort zone? Because it was our topic uh, a few weeks ago when Angela was here in the studio. We were talking about resiliency. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I put this video of me saying this out all over social media that growth can only happen outside of your comfort zone. But I want to play devil's advocate on this real quick. Can we grow outside of our comfort or inside of our comfort zone? I don't think so. Not to, really? any, not to any great extent, no. Well, and, and I'd love to hear this from our callers because we will take some callers later on the show. If you have an opinion on this whole complacency thing, if it's if it's okay sometimes just to stay in the comfort zone, feel free to call in and be a part of the show. We'd love to hear your opinions on this, 804-454-1366. That's 804-454-1366. Because I do believe there are periods in our life where we have to stay within our comfort zone to build courage, build confidence, build knowledge before we go too far into something that would maybe – hurt us, scar us, tear us down if we jumped out of our comfort zone too fast. Because there's a difference between stretching it and breaking it. We got to talk more about that. You sure? I would like You got an opinion on that? I do. I absolutely do. What is it? And I can't fit it in before the break, but I think that... (laughs) (laughs) Can we ever? I think that we we have to... If you... When you break your comfort zone, then your risk of failure, I think, goes up significantly. I think we've got to start by stretching... And and then breaking through. You and I had a meeting just yesterday where we were talking about breaking through oh, or gosh. stretching through the comfort zone of what we're doing here on the show right yeah, now. Yeah, big, big, a, a big stretch. Uh, and, and I can't say we've always been in our comfort zone in this show, but as you start, you're really out of your comfort zone. And then as more months go by, you start to kind of settle more into it. Mm-hmm then that actually can be a catalyst to stretch it again. And I think where I'm coming from on this is staying completely outside of our comfort zone. When we come back, we're going to continue to talk about why people are so complacent and how do we fight complacency. You're listening to The Great People Show. The Great People Show will be right back. Now back to The Great People Show. All right, everyone. Welcome back to The Show, also known as Great People Show GPS. So I want to flip it back on you, JJ. You're ready for this. JJ. He's coming after it. Where, uh, where, where do you think you're complacent in your life? Oh, I didn't expect this. Um, I tend to use, I think, too much of my weekend as too much downtime. 
Like, I can't begin to tell you the plans that I have for the weekend. I, I, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go on a bike ride. I'm going to go on a run. Mm-hmm. We're going to do all these things. And by like one or two in the afternoon on Saturday, uh, I'm still on my phone or my computer. The kids are still playing uh, iPad and we've done nothing. So <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel way too complacent. We did nothing last Saturday. It was the first time we've had a day like that in months. Yeah. And it's the last time we will have a day like that for months. And it felt amazing. Well, I maybe that's that day. the issue. Maybe there's too many of those, right? From in my yeah. in my opinion, well, we for tend me. to we tend to go between sports and everything else. You know, we we go we go hard all weekend, yeah. and it was nice to have a day. I needed that time to recharge. I wouldn't call that complacency. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's nice. It's it's the winter time. You don't have yard work to do, and when you catch that Saturday, enjoy that. And I think any and just in terms of anything that you've done for a really long time in your life, if you've been at a job for twenty years, if you've been in a relationship for twenty years, the natural, um, what's the word I'm looking for? phase that you're in mm-hmm. is complacency. Sure. And we have to fight that. So we're going to get Asher on the hot mic because Asher's not going to escape from this. Asher, what area of your life are you too complacent about? What area of my life am I too complacent about? I like how he always repeats the question. It is. It's good. Make sure it. he understood. That's probably. how you do it when you're, by the way, that's how you're doing it when you're professionally speaking. If you're not ready to answer the question, you just keep repeating it. See, mm-hmm. I just had like 15 seconds to think up a better response. Than now he's stalled. We've been on the air ago. for like 20 minutes here, Asher. Come on. <laughs> Um, complacency. I, you know, you exercise, you have on days and off days. So I wouldn't despise rest because you need it to, you know, to recuperate. Yeah. Well, from what about you? From life. Are you exercising a lot? Is that an area you're complacent? I don't know if complacency is a problem in my life right now. I think overwork is, a, is might be more of an issue. I don't have time to be complacent. Okay, fair enough. I think I we can debate that with anybody. There's something that I thought about, and it's an right. illustration from my life. I used to love playing video games when I was younger. Who right. Didn't? And I didn't have a whole lot of restraint because my mom didn't really care. And <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, she was a single mom, so she, she did the best she could. But Good for her. Um. So I would play video games a lot, and it came to a point where I was playing a game called Fallout. And the, the premise oh, yeah. of Fallout is that basically you have a character in a world, and you come out, and it's it's new. And you go, and you make friends, and you make enemies, and everything that you do decides whether you're good or evil. And so you put countless like hours, life. like 100-plus hours, into building this, this fake person, <laughs> making him rich or poor, making okay. him good or bad. And then I was sitting here one day, and I was like, you know, I could actually be doing this in real life. I could be making real friends and real enemies and real money, and you know my, that might be <laughs> real it. enemies. So you had a you had a future in politics? Is that what you're? Hey, you never know. You never know. You never know. But well, I, but, so it made you feel like you had this overwhelming emotion of complacency. Yes, I did. But now I think I guilt? have a I have is a little guilt. Bit, guilt? Yeah, oh, it okay. is. It's a waste. It's it's poor stewardship. So that may, maybe that's a that's a flag. I've got a list of of, of flags here later on that we're going to cover. I, d- I didn't put that on the list. Flags? Did I just raise a red? What, what did that? Well, do? I think that's a flag for anybody. If you're feeling guilty about something you're doing or something you're not doing, by the way, I don't believe guilt is a valid emotion. I think guilt is actually trickery from the devil uh-huh. to make you feel bad about something. But if it is something you're feeling, then you should be maybe addressing that as far as a complacency issue or could be another issue. Let's say if I sleep in, I, I feel like I feel guilty about that. Like I'm wasting the day. Yeah, I get that. I don't have that option, but I get it. Okay, James, what's up? I, I think that it's important to note in all this that it if you are happy being complacent, mm-hmm. and, and maybe you'll disagree with this, it's okay to be complacent. There are people who are out there who have a job. Let's just sit, take a career. Who have a job that they love. They go to it every day. It pays them well. It puts mm-hmm. food on the table. It's means to the ends. And, and in their life, they use that to, to do things that they enjoy with their sure. family, it, hobbies, whatnot. Maybe they don't want to take that leap, JJ. Maybe they don't want to to do something that takes them out of their comfort zone. Maybe they're just very genuinely happy in that comfort zone. I think it's, I think I would hope that we're talking mainly to the people out there who've become complacent and, and aren't happy about it. Oh, you're right. In other words, I mean, do you, do you agree? Is it okay to be happy if we're complacent in some areas of our life? Is it okay to stay that way? To, to the, to the final point that you made there, I think the people we are speaking to on the show probably are not happy with that complacency. There's probably something in their life that they're too complacent over that they could be struggling with or even should be struggling with, that a lot of the people that don't engage this type of media that we provide here are very happy with the level of complacency they have in their life. And I'm personally not, if they're okay with it, that's great, but I'm not sure if I'm okay with them being okay with it. And and this is where I personally struggle in my life is I meet people all the time 
that are incredibly complacent and happy with where they're at. And I feel my personal calling is to get them to see that they are not exercising a gift. Angie Wright just said that on our Facebook feed. Whenever we ask the question, why are people complacent? She just said it because they don't understand their personal gift. That it's usually the things that are outside of our comfort zone that we are made to do more of, made to be a part of better, bigger, but it's unsafe, it's high risk, it's whatever. And and where I, where I come in a challenge is when I see that in someone and, and it breaks my heart that they are letting these things lie inside of them, that I go after that with some people, sometimes with permission, sometimes without permission. And I hope I'm a catalyst for them to say, maybe I'm too happy being too comfortable. They, they need a wake-up call. And, and that's just, that's my personal opinion. But there's some people that will stay happy, stay complacent, stay content for the rest of their life, and they'll be okay with it. And there'll never be anything I can do about it. I'm going to tell a story really fast because it just came into my head. I did, this was easily 12, 13, 14 years ago, which is quite the wide time gap, I, I might add. My memory's not as sharp as it used to be. Anyway, so I'm doing this this leadership development program at a manufacturing firm in a little town called Martinsville, Virginia. And it was required for every single manager in the company to go through this program. This program involved public speaking. They had to stand up in front of their peers and talk no more than two minutes at a time, once a week for about eight weeks. And literally it was required, no options. There was a 64-year-old man that came to me before the, one, this, before the second session, and he sat down. He said, I can't do this, and he started to cry. He started to cry, guys, because he couldn't stand up in front of a group and talk to people. And the reason he was crying, he said, I'm uh, about eight months away from retirement. I know if I don't do this, I'm going to lose my job and lose my retirement because that's what they've told me. when I've already told them I'm not going to do it, and that's what they told me. And, and we worked through it. He didn't lose his job. He didn't end up taking the program. Nobody... Nobody in this world deserves to be 64 years old, and let's call him Jimmy, and be Jimmy. No one deserves that. And the reason he was upset, he was fighting it so much, is because he was avoiding something his entire life. And that was out of complacency, comfort, and happiness with, I just can't get out of my comfort zone. Well, and I, so that's, that's an interesting story. I think that when we talk about getting out of our comfort zone to where does happiness and complacency meet, I guess, is the question. Because if I want, if I'm going to get out of my comfort zone because I've become complacent in certain areas of my life, Mm -hmm. I'd like to at least do it with things that are going to make me happy. I don't want to leave. I don't want to get out of that comfort zone and hate it. Well, you probably will. So then why (laughs) do it? Because there's there's, there's two issues at place here. There's your goals, your visions, your purpose, your gifts, the things that you know you need to achieve, and then you very instantly sometimes realize, I can't do those things where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And you have to make a decision. Is it okay to stay exactly where I'm at and forego my purpose, my vision, my goals, because I know I cannot have the both? So there is a decision that says, I know I'm not going to be happy by getting out of my comfort zone. I know I'm going to be uncomfortable. But I also know in my heart of hearts, it's temporary. You may hate it, but you're going to temporarily hate it. Maybe. I, hey, I'm sure there's some people that have hated being out of their comfort zone because it never became comfortable, right? Mm-hmm. And that's and that's that's another that's another step in this process is once you get out of your comfort zone and you start to really beat and fight this complacency, where you then go starts to become comfortable. Absolutely. Definitely. And then and then and then you get happy again, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's perfectly. This is this is an ongoing process, and this this very specific part of the topic is why I asked you at the front, do we need to stay out of our comfort zone? Because there are these, call them stairs and landings, right? Where going up the stairs is getting out of our comfort zone. We hit a landing and then we get to take a rest. Mm-hmm. There, there should be periods of life in your, uh, there should be periods of, of your life where you are resting as you're thinking about absorbing and analyzing okay, what's next? What I have a problem with and I challenge our viewers with is if you just hang out on that landing and you still see a flight of stairs and for the rest of your life, you say, nah, I'm good. Oh, I agree. And I agree with that entirely. I think that the one thing that keeps a lot of people from climbing that last set of stairs is because 
there's more to a lot of these decisions that take us out of, the, of our comfort zone than just ourselves. How, right. how are these things going to affect our family, our wives, our children, our living situations? What are we putting at risk uh, in order to do that? And those are all barriers mm-hmm. sometimes between people and, and climbing that last flight. Yeah. And, and we have to come to terms with that because getting out of your comfort zone, it, it can affect the people around you, the oh, people yeah. that you love. Well, and, and part of the comfort zone uh, is another terminology that I've seen in several books called upper limit, where we purposely set an upper limit for ourselves. We purposely set a comfort zone for ourselves. And, and we're saying things like, uh, well, I can't do that today. Well, yesterday's a good example. I met so many people that were setting upper limits for themselves. I go to Food Lion after work, and I'm talking to the the first thing she says, can I help you? And I tell her what? And then she starts to say to me, is it nasty outside? Is it rainy outside? Is it awful outside? <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, it's a little chilly, but it's not awful. Like she was looking for a reason to hate the weather. Well, of all things to talk about, that's not what I want to talk about. But certainly, why does that even matter? You're inside and who cares? You're just setting literally an upper limit for yourself. Mm-hmm. So No, absolutely. So and that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about on today's show is um, are you too complacent? Are there things that you're literally supposed to do more of in your life and get out of your comfort zone? But what is holding you inside of your current reality is comfort and challenging you to get outside of that comfort zone so that whatever goals you may have, whatever purpose you may have, you're able to accomplish that and not be so complacent. So come on back and we'll keep talking more about this complacency issue. The Great People Show will be right back. Now back to The Great People Show. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us here. We are so grateful for anybody that tunes in to The Great People Show and, and joins us here. We, we take callers on occasion. So if you like the topic or you have some questions about what we're talking about, uh, thoughts, Give us a call, 804-454-1366, and you can really talk to us about anything, but we're going to talk about something very specific. Today, we're talking about complacency, uh, never letting yourself feel lazy is maybe another way to put it. Uh, are you a big Seth Godin fan, either of you guys? Do you even know who I'm talking about? I know who you're talking about. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not, not not a sure. fan. I have no idea. Oh, wait, you have no idea who Seth Godin is? Absolutely not. You have a lot of reading to do this weekend, brother. I've got three books that you need to catch up on real quick. So uh, on his blog overnight, he it, it very timely, unbelievable timely, the title of his blog post was Modern Laziness and how he talks about uh, laziness used to be all physical, mm-hmm. right? Just not going out and working in your yard, not working hard enough at, at work because most work was physical labor. Right. That modern laziness is actually avoiding the emotional labor in what we do. And this is a lot of what we, you and I have been talking about, that that this uncomfortable feeling we get when we're not complacent or when when we, when we move out of complacency is emotional labor. It's really hard to do that emotionally. Why in the world would we do it? Uh, and a couple of examples, and I'm going to get into a few of these as far as questions to ask yourself, is Seth says, this is the laziness of not raising your hand to ask the key question, not caring about those in need, or not digging in to ship something that might not work. Laziness is having an argument instead of a thoughtful conversation. Emotional laziness. Lazy is waiting until the last minute, and lazy is avoiding what we fear. The whole idea of complacency is avoiding fear. It's just staying away from it. Yeah, And, um, and we're wired that way. I, I, we're, we are wired to be complacent because it actually protects us. There's, there's so much comfort and safety in complacency. So I've got a few questions to ask for yourself as you're on this journey, um, to, to greatness in your life, fulfilling your purpose, trying to improve things in your world and your relationships. Number one, do you rarely feel scared or nervous? Mm -hmm. If you've created a bubble in your life where you rarely feel scared or nervous, and I might add, there are books, talk shows, videos, companies designed to help you not feel nervous or scared. Like there's an industry around making you not feel nervous or scared. I feel nervous and scared most days. So I think (laughs) I'm good there. So why, why do you feel that way? 
because I am always pushing myself, pushing, pushing the boundaries. Legit. I can't stop. I can't help. You're the same way. Yeah. I can't help myself. In I, fact, I wish I, I was less that way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? I because I sometimes it it gets exhausting constantly being nervous and scared and and constantly feeling like like I've got so much further to go. I think I think staying out of our comfort zone all the time is exhausting. Yeah. I, I don't know if I, I don't know many people that can really maintain it to create that right balance in their life. And I think that it's important to to note because now we've brought laziness into the conversation. Yeah. And having a lazy relaxing hour, night, day, yeah. weekend. That's because you were talking about it before, how, how, how you felt on Saturday, you know, we've become a society where, and, and Catherine, my wife gets on me about this. Mm-hmm. If, if I am not doing something, I feel guilty. Yeah. Well, we're getting back and into you, the guilt. And you use that word, you yep. use that word earlier. Yep. And, and so I, we'll be sitting at night having an hour of just downtime and I'm there banging away emails on my phone and and she'll turn to me she'll say just just yeah, it's go. okay to stop just unplug it's okay to stop so maybe can i ask you about a definition of laziness maybe laziness is whenever you rest just too much i say la- laziness is chronic resting they're chronic re- i i totally agree i i read a book last month called rest it was absolutely transformational for me because there are so many key points in there that we have to uh, allow ourselves to rejuvenate yeah, I just think that if we do that too much, in order to, and, and we're sacrificing quality time with our family, we're sacrificing quality work, we're sacrificing what I'm very passionate about, not exercising the gifts that you're giving, not answering the calling that have been has been bestowed upon you, then um, laziness is a factor. Yeah. It's it's uh, you know I don't know my my seven deadly sins off the top of my head, but isn't that one of them? Asher, help me out here. What is one of the deadly seven deadly sins that's related to laziness? I'd have. Maybe we I'd need a caller to, to call I'd, us in. I'm not up on my. On my seven I'm not either. Sins. Yeah, yeah. But it's not complacency. What is it, Asher? No. Do you know? No. I don't, okay. All I don't, right. I'm not up on my seven deadly sins either. Well, I'm sure many of us are up on them. We just don't know them by heart. Yes. We still we don't want to know them. <laughs> I know gluttony. Gluttony. That's a, that's a whole other show. Yeah, gluttony of time, maybe. Uh, gluttony, gluttony of complacency. That's right. So that was the first question to ask yourself. The number two question is: Are you really learning? Are you growing your mind? Uh, I, I I made I put a stake in the ground in my life. At the end of October, it was actually more like mid-October, I said, I need to get back to reading. I need to get back to seeing some things in in this world and learning about things in this world that I have let go of because for some reason I just thought I knew it all. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. And I didn't actively think that, but my behavior portrayed that because I stopped reading. I mean, I listen to people all the time. That's how I learn. But there were some really great books that I've just been watching dust accumulate. I made the commitment to read four books in November. I read five and a half. And I've now created a system where at an absolute minimum, no matter what, I'm going to read four books. Mm-hmm. And the system is pretty much fail safe. The only thing that gets in the way of the system is laziness. If I make the decision, I'm just not going to do that today. But every single day I read something. So the question for you is, have you stopped learning? That's another indicator of perhaps you've become too complacent. Another one has life become a constant routine? Yes. And I have very, very differing opinions about this. There was an article I read the other day that um, some of the most successful people, a.k.a. billionaires, they have very limited wardrobes. Steve Jobs, black turtleneck sweater, yep. jeans, yep. every day. It's purpose routine so that you keep your mind fresh for other more important decisions. There's a lot to be said about that. But I think the routine that we're talking about here on complacency is I've just created a life of contentment. Is that okay? It, is it okay to be content? I, I would argue that it is. I would argue that we're here, we're here talking to the people who don't, don't want to be content, who want to get out of that, who want to gather up. Now, there are, are certain situations in life, though, JJ. It's not just about personal growth, there are certain situations in life where contentment uh, can lead to to bad situations. I'll give you a great example. Okay. So in the, I always have my fire service story. So in mm-hmm. the fire service, we get a lot of alarms. A, 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 in a yeah. building, the fire alarm goes off and, and we get called. And the majority of the time, like 99% of the time, it's a false alarm. Oh, wow. 
And across the United States, it's an issue with crews becoming complacent where they head oh, to these alarms yeah. with the assumption, hey, this is it's nothing. It's an alarm. alarm. This is a waste of time. So mm -hmm. they don't get dressed. They don't mm -hmm. go in, in in that aggressive mode ready to go to work. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get burned, possibly literally, yep. if that if you if you give in to that temptation to be complacent and you have to make a very intentional decision that, hey, every even though we're going to get five of them a day, we're going to go to every one of those assuming the building is on fire. So in those situations, you literally have to stay to your comfort zone. A lifeguard. Yes. Like any, Great example. Any lifeguard. Like in, I talked to a lifeguard company, and they said, we actually have to train our lifeguards to kind of stay stressed. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to stay stressed. You have to. Because if not, you're working hour after hour, day after day. Nothing's ever happening other than little kids running too fast. Right. And then all of a sudden, someone starts to drown, and you go, oh, my gosh, this is actually happening. By the way, guys, I have a special announcement. Our amazing listeners have told us on Facebook Live the the deadly sin this relates to. <laughs> Are you ready? It's called sloth. Sloth. Oh, there my gosh. Go. We failed the quiz. We failed. Thank you, Will Wright. We appreciate it. Will's been on the show several times as a caller. Never ceases to fail us. Never ceases. Thank so you, Will. Your, your, so your question, is life a constant routine that, that you need to ask yourself, what routines do you have that you shouldn't be treating as routines? And maybe we can get that from a caller when we come back. 804-454-1366 is having a routine, building too much complacency. Come back, folks. You're listening to The Great People Show. The Great People Show will be right back. Now back to The Great People Show. Hey everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, for those of you that do catch us on Facebook Live, which is facebook.com slash great people show when we do the show, I have had a yearning for anyone watching us on Facebook during the show to not have to hear the commercial and rather listen to us talk in the studio, which could cause us legal liability if you heard some of the things that we talked about here. But that is one of my visions for the show. And, and I want to share that because usually what we talk about has to do with not being complacent. Asher, Asher's giving me a dirty look. This is a point of contention between JJ and I. I love it. Well, Oh, yeah. James <laughs> wants to keep the, the hot mic uh, cold. Yes. And I want to make it very hot mic. But I have goals and visions for the show. And the reason I'm going to bring this up and talk about us is because it has specifically to do with complacency. Uh when we first started this show, I was way out of my comfort zone. And then I started to quickly love it and get used to it. I remained happy. I still remain happy to this day. But I realized I could do this for the rest of my life and it would be perfectly fine for me. But there's more to it. We've had a studio upgrade. We went from a radio studio that was generic to now the great people studio. That's right. Um, we, we bought naming rights to it. Mm-hmm. By putting up the poster on the wall. I don't know if Asher realizes that, but uh, possession is nine-tenths of the wall, from That's my right. understanding. Um, and I have visions of getting to a bigger studio. Yeah. I have visions to get this radio show across the globe, beyond internet, right? It's already on the globe because of internet. So I, I'm making a choice. I can either stay comfortable and be perfectly content with where I'm at, or I can chase a vision that has been bestowed upon me. This is not as much my vision as I feel the vision that God has bestowed upon me and get out of my comfort zone yeah. and, and uh, financially out of my comfort zone, physically out of my comfort zone, certainly emotionally out of my comfort zone. Uh, and, and I, and I don't, I don't say any of that to impress anybody. I just say it to impress upon you. You have to look at your life right now and say, where have I just become a little too content? And before we left, we were talking about, is life a constant routine? Um, we may want to come back to that one, but I want to get to the rest of this because it's really important too, is do you reject change? Mm. Uh, naturally, most people do. Absolutely. Unless the change isn't completely, blatantly, overwhelmingly in our favor. Right. Like if your boss came to you and said, uh, I need you to work an extra 30 minutes a week and I'm going to double your salary. Right. Hold on a second. I'm in to win it. Yeah. All right. That's perceived positive change, but most of us do reject change. We do. It's just natural. It's it's out of our. It gets us out of our comfort zone. Oh, absolutely. And and change also leads to a lot of unknowns. 
We're very uncomfortable with with unknowns. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, fear. We're back to the fear yep. thing, aren't we? Yep. Back to the fear thing. Uh, another one is, do you feel stuck? And and I think if you feel stuck, there is something at play in your life that's happening, not to you but for you. Because right. most people, to your point earlier, most people do find contentment and happiness. They don't feel stuck. There's no, no. stuck feeling. And a lot of people, a lot of people want to get out of that comfort zone, JJ. And this goes back to something we were talking about before, but they feel stuck not because of themselves. Mm -hmm. They feel stuck because of the impact that these decisions would have on their family and loved ones. And that causes them to be stuck. You know, when we have a family, when we have children, we make certain sacrifices that we're going to put them first. And sometimes that means sacrificing a little bit of what we would do for ourselves. And that's a tough one, I think. And I think there's an upper limit problem with most of that thinking. Uh, It's legit to say, well, this, you know, I don't know what this would do to our finances. I don't know what this would do to my time with my family. But we very much put an upper limit on ourselves, a.k.a. excuses not to do something. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's something that you should be conscious of. You don't have to stay out of your comfort zone all the time, but you need to be very aware of how what you're going through in life, the emotions that you have, is an upper limit being set upon you. Another one is, um, do you lack ambition? Like, do you just, is there, is there something in your life that you would just absolutely love to do or love to go after, or isn't there? And I think that that is the toughest of all these, these seven things you've read, these seven questions. If, if you lack ambition, mm-hmm. I think that is the toughest one to overcome mm-hmm. because, because flipping that switch for people, I've had a lot of friends that, that we've had this conversation with. They say, you know, Jay, I want to do this. I, I know I want to make this change, but yeah. I, I lack the ambition to do it. Yeah. If you don't have that genuine fire, that burning mm-hmm. in your soul to go after you're it, lost. you're probably not going to succeed. Yeah. And yeah. I, that's a tough thing to turn around. It's a lost feeling. Yes. It's a very, very lost feeling. And so one side of that is you're ignoring the call that mm-hmm. these things are these things are, are showing up in your life, but you're ignoring it because of all the things we've talked about on not just this show, but practically every show that we've had since we started mm-hmm. is, nope, out of my comfort zone. Nope, that's going to cause me to change. Nope, that's going to make me do things that I'm not ready to do yet. Or even worse, do things that I don't feel capable of doing or even competent enough to do it. Um, in, in the few short minutes we have left on today's show, we are going to talk to you about what you need to do from this point forward to fight complacency. And I, I think the very first thing that needs to be addressed is you need to really take a hard look at your life in the areas of it and say, have I become too lazy with certain things? Mm. Have I become lazy? And I'm not talking about physically lazy, folks. I'm talking about mentally lazy. Have I enabled little arguments to show up in my relationship with my spouse? That's laziness. That's mm-hmm. not putting your guard up to say, maybe I shouldn't uh, attack somebody over this or, or, or shouldn't make a big deal of this. That just becomes mentally lazy. And a lot of this comes from fatigue. Like if you're overworking yourself or trying to do too much, Sometimes we just let our guard down and we emotionally just fall apart. Yeah. And these little things show up in our life. I know you work with a lot of people who are in sales, as you and I work in sales, and it's easy to become complacent where instead of going out there and chasing the business, people sit in their office and they wait for the phone to ring. Yeah. Because they can. Yep. But you're not going to grow that way. Mm -mm. No, I've known many people that have been in the car business, and 99% of those car sales people just stand around on the lot and wait for people to show up. And the ones that I've either worked with or specifically knew well that did something different, they wouldn't let that happen to them. They would make an effort to go out and build relationships with people, get in networking groups, whatever it took to be just a little more successful than the next person. Not necessarily because you're competing with other people that you work with, but you just don't want the status quo. to you, You don't want to be a victim of, well, if no one shows up on the lot, that's not my fault. Right. And most people that are in those kind of situations, that's how they act. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's how they react to certain situations. So, I, so the first step is to really look at the things that are happening in your life emotionally. Am I, becoming, am I becoming too emotionally lazy? The other thing, and we are at a perfect time for this. Let's see, it is what, December 7th. And it is, I know it is such a cliche. Please pardon the cliche. 
But what are your written goals for 2018? I mean, seriously, how many more times do we have to go through this, listener? Yeah. (laughs) Where people aren't writing down specifically what you want to have happen in 2018. Because if you don't know what you want to have happen, that's it. I think Yogi Berra said it. If you don't know where you're going, you're always going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny you say that. I'm actually, uh, finishing up my business plan for 2018 okay. right now, which is a written plan in business yeah. for what I'm going to accomplish in 2018. And, there, and you need a written plan for, for anything that's happening in your life. Oh, definitely. Uh, it's, it's completely, it's beyond legitimate. It, in my opinion, it's absolutely required to sit down and even do this with your family. Like I've got an eight-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter. I bet I could have, and I will have, a very robust conversation with very, very young children to say, hey, guys, 2018 is almost here. What do you, what, what's, what's something awesome that you want to have happen in our family or our lives next year? Now, you're going to hear things like, um, Disney you know, World. I want toys, I want to go to Disney <laughs> yeah. World. But that starts the process of getting someone to think about what do I want to have happen in my life. Yeah. And, and, and I know it's a cliche, but you cannot escape the cliche because... 98% of the population never do this. Yes. They never do. And then you wonder at the end of the year, you're probably wondering it right now. Well, I didn't get any of that stuff done this year. Or even worse, well, what a terrible year. I can't wait for it to be over with. Now, uh, we, we've talked about words on the show. We've talked about a lot of things that have to do with that. If you reflect on 2017 and you felt that there was too much complacency in your life, the only person that you could blame is you, but I don't want you to. You cannot get into this guilt thing that we talked about. Take control of what's going to happen next. Complacency can be squashed with a powerful vision that you look at every single day. And as creepy as it might be is whenever you stand at the mirror every morning and you say it out loud to yourself. Weird. Really weird until you get used to it. Even less weird when that stuff starts to become a reality. Now, that's the bomb right there. So that's an, that's another thing is um, is to actually do something physically different in your life to overcome complacency to break the routine. Now I've tried to break my morning routine a few times. Sam's not real appreciative of it. <laughs> <laughs> I usually don't give a forewarning, um, but sometimes you have to you have to literally physically step out of your comfort zone, do something that scares the crap out of you. Yeah, and we have to deal with the complacent people. Who are around us. Yeah. Oh, that's the other piece of it, isn't it? Yeah. How do you manage complacent people? Yeah. How do you communicate with complacent spouses? How do you parent complacent children? I, if I had a nickel for every time I've had a grown adult call me and say, uh, I need to get my 22-year-old son or daughter involved into a Dale Carnegie program because they don't <laughs> know what they want to do with their life, they're complacent, I would just be rich on the phone calls. No doubt. Um, and it's very difficult as a parent of a grown adult to continue to do things for them to help them get out of this rut. And, and the whole other issue we haven't even addressed on today's show that we did get some feedback on with social media is how much of this complacency may be driven by an emotional disorder or a psychological disorder like depression. Mm. There has to be consideration around that. Um, now that we're talking about how to manage and deal better with uh, other people that perhaps are complacent, uh, the first thing you don't do is you tell them, you're one lazy beep. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you start doing that kind of stuff. You, you you're can't, pushing them yeah. away. You can't you can't fight it with negativity. No, you can't fight it with negativity. No, and in in most cases, people don't feel like they are uh, complacent or lazy. And even you know, if they do, they don't want to hear it mm-hmm. because maybe they already feel bad about it. It everything has to be looking forward. In, this, in these situations, especially if you're a manager of people. If you start to try to do an archaeological dig with people, it's, it's probably not going to turn out very well. That's true. I think that a lot of it, when we talk about dealing with other complacent people, employees, family members, etc., is to, uh, to lead by example. Yeah, you know, good point. Uh, lead by example. People generally, not generally, people a lot of the time will rise to what they see the people who mm-hmm. are, are leaders in their world do Mm -hmm. so don't boss them around (laughs) be a leader yeah boss versus a leader that's a whole nother topic but be a leader and show them the way 
and, and create a vision with them. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to harp on this some more is create a vision for your life. For Pete's sakes, make a decision about what you really want your life to look like mm-hmm. because it's not going to happen automatically. The, the, the clouds, life is not designed so that the clouds open up, a light is bestowed upon you, and then all of these things just show up. Life is messy, life is hard work. Life requires us to get out of our comfort zone and take an initiative and do something that is very uncomfortable because that's the only way something new, something great, something for us is going to show up is if we show up first. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in to The Great People Show. You can catch all of our shows on Apple Podcast. Go to greatpeopleshow.com and you can see all of our videos. I want to thank Asher, our producer, James Big Daddy Muncy for being in the studio with us week in and week out. You can catch us every Thursday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. If it is to be, it's up to us. And we have the power to fulfill our vision, but you have to have a vision first. That's it. You have to go out and make it happen. Thanks for everyone for listening. You've been listening to The Great People Show. Thanks for joining us. Tune in to The Great People Show again next week, Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m.